Hey everybody, David Chatham with Angel Oak Creative. Welcome to our latest episode in our second season of our podcast, uh, Nonprofit State of Minds. Uh, this is uh, just an opportunity for us to kind of pick the brains of, of nonprofit leaders in our sector and, and just learn something new, which I do every single time. Uh, today, we have a, a great guest. Uh, Kim Lanfear is CEO of Aparo. Uh, Aparo is a nonprofit, and I'll, Kim will do a better job of describing what they do. But Kim is a, a Aparo is a nonprofit that actually serves other nonprofits by helping them get a handle on their technology. So I'll let uh, Kim dig a little deeper there. But welcome, Kim. Thank you so much, David. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, you did a great job. I don't think I have to say anything more, but of course, you know, I will. Um, <laughs> as David said, we are a, a nonprofit that serves other nonprofits. And uh, our goal is to help nonprofits become more effective in how they serve by being a partner to them to elevate to best practices around processes related to technology. Um, we're not going to come in and do a custom build or, um, you know, uh, code something for you and create an app that we can point you to some people who could. Uh, our secret sauce is that we connect you to skilled volunteers in the community. So we create um, a series of partnerships that you may or may not have access to before, new partners coming in and looking at you in a different way, using their skills for good. And we do that in one of three ways. The first one is we call tech therapy. Mm -hmm. And we call it that because our partners, nonprofit partners have said when they have a tech therapy call session, <laughs> they feel a whole lot better. You know, after people just off like the ledge know. from their technology issues. That's right. That's right. So it's it's really just advice and counsel, and it's at no cost. It's an email. It's a conversation virtually. Um, it's anything to help uh, our nonprofit partners better articulate business pain point and, and understand how it might be related to technology mm -hmm. somehow or business process. And we help them find the language and the articulation of what this is that's causing them such uh problems in how they serve. And right. uh, in that conversation, sometimes we can just solve it right there. Uh, sometimes it's a series of conversations. We have to do a little research and come back. And sometimes it's engaging a volunteer to do a little conversation with you as well. And from there, we, we bring you to one of three, uh, two other silos. And the first is education. And that can look like anything from a one-on-one -on -one coaching session to uh, your whole team needs to know Power BI. So we'll figure out a group to come in and treat you Power BI. And there might be a small fee for that, but it's very small. And uh, we curate the content and we're there with the skilled volunteers. So you're never alone. Wow. And you never have to feel like you're going to get an enterprise answer. And um, then the third leg of that stool is solutions, something that takes eight to 16 weeks to implement. And typically it's one of three things. It's a business process assessment looking at all of your business processes and what are clear and what are not and helping mm. to find those um, or a tech plan and assessment. What have you got? What's broken? What should be broken? Um, what uh, needs to be fixed? What direction you need to go on? What that journey is going to look like for three years? What the what budget should be for it? Um, what the skill level needs to be for it. And then the third thing is an application selection. So mm. you, you need a learning management system. You need a CRM. You need something and you, You've gone to the market yourself probably a couple of times and just done a Google search and you've plugged something in and it maybe didn't work very well. Yeah. Um, so we bring in, again, skilled volunteers to help you really articulate what is it the system must do for you and what would you like it to do for you? And then what can you pay and what skills do you have? And, and really do a thorough standing so that when we our goal is to have any project or, or touch point that we bring in, something that the nonprofit is still using, still engaging with two years later. And we wow. have 92% sustainability. So that's wow. our goal. We have a lot of volunteers who become board members, certainly become donors. And uh, we're engaging these nonprofits and corporations that that's, that's kind of the side benefit is creating these partnerships. Well, thank you for that uh, great yeah. description of the work that you do. And all of that sounded very familiar from our clients uh, here at Angel Oak and the the challenges they face. Uh, and we'll get in more deeply into that. Definitely want to hear more about that, but also want to learn a little about, about you. How did you get into the nonprofit sector? What was your journey to uh, to Aparo? It was a very circuitous route. <laughs> I like to call it uh, the career, instead of the career ladder, it was the career jungle gym. 
where I kind of went around and up and down and around about. Um, I started back in college as an actress and I thought that's with what I wanted to do. And I was running the student theater program and had done a lot of really good things around leading that group and thought, hmm, maybe I should lean into this leadership thing. And so got a master's in corporate social responsibility, basically, and then did that with a couple of different financial institutions uh, domestically and globally, and then uh, ran a theater company, up, a professional theater company up in Chicago, and thought that that might be my dream of connecting the two and decided it was not. Um, and then uh, moved into some consulting with both uh, for-profit and non-for-profit organizations, and then found a par. Uh, I was looking for something uh, to engage me back in, and I, I knew I had skills in sustainability, I, I, in helping board uh, boards develop and 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 pivot, and in helping organizations understand the business situation they were in, and and creating ways to become more sustainable. Yeah. And so this really laid perfectly into that. And I thought, well, this is what I'm going to do. And I was, I am not, I was not a technologist. And I learned a lot about technology while I've been here. I've been at Aparo for 15 years this wow. March. Congratulations. Um, CEO for 12. Thank you. I've, I've never worked anywhere 15 years before. So this is kind of exciting. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And a great team. Oh my gosh. I work with the best people. Well, and just, uh, I don't think we've said it yet, but you're, you're in Charlotte, right? Yes. Uh, Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina. North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Primarily serve North Carolina-based nonprofits. Is that correct? Um, well, yes and no. We have now the not kind of no. We're going into other markets as well. Okay. We're in Atlanta right. right now. Okay. And we've served in about 14 states, but much oh, of that good. is related to our webinar series. Okay. Um, but we have done some other state work. Uh, we're basically growing by funder desire, where they want us to be is where we'll go. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, Congratulations. we don't want to say no to nonprofits, so we're trying yeah, to I know. fund it's our so way hard. into that. It's it so is. hard it to really say is. no as long as the as long as the money's there. It's uh, it's a little bit easier to say yes. Yes, it's uh, so true, so true. You know it. that. I mean, you yes. guys work with nonprofits too, and you we know. are very familiar with that. Um, so tell, I mean, you know, non you know, the technology that we have today is so ubiquitous, right? I mean. You, everybody's got something in their pocket that they're, you know, that they're on They're, you know, they, they go into the office, they've got the technology there and then nonprofits, you know, talk every day about their CRM or their donor platform, or, you know, maybe they're on some kind of business uh, related uh, management platform. Uh, what role does technology play in the daily life of a nonprofit these days? I love that question because it it gets gives me an opportunity to say a couple of things that I'm um you know particular about. I, I use the word nonprofit because it's it's ubiquitous and it's what we use. I don't really like it. I prefer to use the term um mission aligned or or mission driven or something like that yeah. because I think the word nonprofit tends to particularly in the corporate world, but anywhere people think, oh, they're not businesses. Right. And so this gets exactly to, uh, I'm, I'm coming back to your answer. There's my second thing is nonprofits are businesses. They run just like any other business. They do have to have profits because if they don't have profits, they can't invest that money back into the work that they're doing. Right. The difference right. is that their profits are going to be used to invest back into their employees and into their work and into the mission versus being paid out to shareholders. So it's a different reason for needing profit, but I, I struggle with, and I know Dan Falata does too out there in a larger conversation than I'm capable of, of driving, but, you know, not thinking about the importance of nonprofits creating a profit so that they can yeah. do more yeah. good and do it more effectively. And when you think about technology, David, you are so right. Um, you know, everything we do in our day, everything is related to technology. This webinar is related to technology. Right. The email we sent to talk about getting this webinar together that has a technology component, you know, everything, our HR, our donor management, it all has technology to some degree or not, even if it's just Excel, yeah. that's technology, right? Yeah. So it, it really is ubiquitous in how we do our business and we can be fearful of it as nonprofits, mission oriented organizations, or we can say, okay, I'm, I'm going to lean into this. I'm going to figure out how to maximize it, how to yeah. use it at its best practices. So it's not using me, I'm using it. And, you know, 
check myself along the way, make sure I'm not doing dangerous things, make sure I'm doing things that are going to um, embolden my mission, make it stronger and, and able to serve more and more effectively and help my employees who are already stretched to the max. When you think, what does technology do? Technology gets rid of repetitive tasks or mm -hmm. it lessens repetitive tasks, right? So, you know, you've got to do a report. So Excel, does that, or you take it up a level and it's a tool that has that data in it and can generate the report for you. So technology is critical to our work to serve communities and to serve those in need. And so we need to embrace it and we need to say, it's okay. I'm not here because of technology. I'm not a technologist. I'm a social worker. I'm a minister. Right. I'm an actor, but I know I need to use this so that I can serve more people better. Yeah. So I, I think that answered your question. It did. No, it did. I mean, it, you know, we, again, you know, we have, there's marketing platforms, right? There's marketing technology, there's email and MailChimp and, you know, all the other things that we do. Then there's fundraising platforms that we run into. And, you know, I mean, to your point, most of the clients that we run into each day are, you know, I mean, you know, it's so cliche, but, it, you know, they're wearing so many hats, right? Mm -hmm. They can't be technology uh, experts uh, and do all the other things that they do. Um, you know, I guess, why is technology often a, kind of the redheaded stepchild? And I, I used to be redheaded, so I can say that. But, <laughs> you can uh, say that. You can I've lost okay. all my hair. But, you know, what, <laughs> what, what, why is uh, why is technology... You know, I, I hear people like, you know, they still have 20 year old laptops, right? I mean, even just the basic technology, right? That right. why is it so unfunded or underfunded? Uh, and by the way, we're doing a screening of Uncharitable tomorrow night here. Yes. So mm -hmm. um, we're looking forward I just watched that on Friday. Something nonprofit folks coming together tomorrow I night. I just watched so. that on Friday. It was great. It's a great, so, great. I wish I could be there with you guys watching it. Um, yeah, I, I would, would love really to like you. to be there. But yeah. yeah, tell us, tell us why it's why does technology get the short shrift in terms of funding and other things? You other know, your, men your mention of uncharitable. I mean, it's right there in that conversation. And again, that's Dan Plot of having the conversation and it goes back to what I was saying before. People, I think, generally speaking, don't want their nonprofits to be a business. And, and so they they don't want that. They want it just to be people who are giving to somebody. I'm a, I'm a good citizen of this community and I'm just going to make this other person more comfortable, more healthy, more secure. I'm just going to do that. And they don't like to think about the reality of the fact that if I'm going to do that, I, I'm going to put my time into doing that. Time is, is money. It, it, it yeah. My time has cost, even if it's just that act of you giving me something that I'm giving to someone else in a different way is going to create time that I have to have to deliver that service. And I think a lot of funders, I know a lot of funders just really want to fund the program. They don't want to fund the infrastructure of the organization to be more effective at the program, because it's very hard to say when I have a 20 year old laptop and I turn it in for a new one and I had to pay, I don't know, $2,000 for that new one. How can I say that that $2,000 laptop is having me serve better? How right. can I justify that in a grant? So if I want to buy all my staff new you know, computers and I've got 10 staff, that's $20,000. How do I justify? Where did that $20,000 go related to the human that I'm trying to feed? And so it's very hard to do a direct tie. There is a tie, you know, absolutely. Yeah. If your system isn't breaking down and you don't have to spend an hour every week redoing whatever it is you're doing related to the system rebooting or whatever it is, you now have a time hour available that you can now serve. Yeah. But a lot of funders don't get that. Um, we have had at Aparo a lot of success in the corporate space because corporations do understand the importance of infrastructure. Uh, yeah. If you think about your bank, you know, you couldn't do banking now. If you think about it, you would like, oh my gosh, you, you would take away my online banking. How could you do that? And it better be good. It better tell me what my statement is and it better yeah. very quickly allow me to deposit a check and it may, you know, may transfer funds and it, may, it better have a lot of functionality or I'm going to go to the other bank. Well, most folks don't think about that for a nonprofit. Right. That if I'm serving somebody who is traumatized by domestic abuse, wouldn't it be great if I could provide them with a seamless experience 
where it's easy for them to come in versus another trauma right. of paperwork and all kinds of things that I have to go through for seven times as I go through different organizations moving me through the system. Right. You know, wouldn't that right. be great if mm -hmm. I could have a system that worked as easily for someone who's experiencing trauma as all of us expect to have when we're doing our online banking? Yeah. But that's just yeah. not the way America thinks about it. Um, yeah. That's just not yeah. what we are. So it's hard to find funding for those things, which which is why we created the model where we engage with nonprofits at no cost. Right. Our programs, a few of our programs have a little bit of skin in the game cost, but most of them are free. And we're relying on those in the community who do understand the importance of effectiveness and how you do your work um, being important to fund the work. Right. Um, so that that's why i mean it all goes i think it just all goes back to that people don't really think nonprofits are businesses so they they yeah. shouldn't have expenses they shouldn't have you know <laughs> i remember a big fundraising event we had once and i was orienting a board member and he'd been around us for years years and years and years he'd been part of this big event and when i oriented um this group to coming on board to the to our nonprofit as a board member he spoke up and said well i thought that event all of those costs were donated Ah, uh, no, this this event that we come to to raise money and it's worth it because there's a lot of money that's raised there. It costs money to put it together. So, no, right. hotels aren't going to give you their space. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that that's I think why. No matter the cost. Um, and I think nonprofits are afraid to ask for the funding, too. Yeah. Because when yeah, you're going yeah, to a funder. Too. Yeah, to, you know, the whole Dan Pilata point and everything too is right. I mean, we're you're really choking your impact, right? When you limit your ability and your capacity. I mean, you know, if I'm if I'm onboarding a new client coming in for you know because of some trauma they've experienced, and it it takes me thirty minutes to do it versus an hour and a half, I'm able to do three people in that same amount of time. So am I not, you know, is that investment then not have an ROI that mm -hmm. is, you know, is measurable? And, you know, I think that's where we miss opportunities to see it as this isn't overhead, right? This this isn't that that kind of, you know, negative uh, uh, in negative uh, spending. It's investing. And yeah, that the. I yeah, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but, uh, you know, no, you said it very well. You really did. It's it's true. It's true. Finding that, you know, it's a journey we have to go on and we have to have those evangelists like Dan Falata who can have a national stage um, yeah. for people to begin to hear that. Um, <laughs> I, I've heard people say that, you know, Goodwill isn't really a nonprofit because they have these stores where they sell things. Um, and I'm like, Wait, a minute. <laughs> they have earned revenues so they don't have to raise so much money. Right. And they're teaching people valuable skills in the community. Right. What What would be bad about that? But for some reason, it feels dirty to the people that I've talked to a couple of times that, that we should have a program where there's earned money. It's like, that's actually good. That right. That's a sustaining piece yeah. of income that can keep a mission going forward. Yeah. And that's a whole nother, that's a whole, a whole nother conversation, right? I guess. Yeah, it is. It is. We'll go down that whole road easily. Uh, I know. easily. <laughs> There's so many other things to ask, but yes, we yes. will. I mean, what, so, you know, as you engage with, with, uh, really? with nonprofits, with these mission driven organizations, you know, what are the most common technology challenges or the, the technology opportunities, depending on how you want to look at it? Uh, you know, what, what, what do you see on a daily basis as being those things that are just, either missed opportunities or tripping people, you know, tripping organizations up uh, from being, reaching their fullest potential, right? A lot of times we will engage with a nonprofit who will come to us saying, we need an app. <laughs> and, um, I'm you sorry, know, I so, couldn't have laughed. I, I, that probably not have been appropriate. No, you're <laughs> supposed to laugh. That it was, it was supposed to be a laugh because it's easy to say that and easy to think if I just had a tool on this phone that my my constituents could log into, then it would solve everything. And of course, the problem with that is this 
costs money if you can get it given to you to develop it that's fantastic but within two weeks the app will need to be updated it will need to have security patches it will need to be maintained you'll discover that the functionality you created doesn't really do it what you thought it would do and you have to pivot again and do some more so it is not a simple let's just put an app out there um and often so we see three things a lot um we see uh, well, kind of what I said before, we, we see tech assessments. I, I don't really understand what I've got. And I don't understand what about my whole network of technology is good, bad, dangerous, dangerous, you know, related to, you know, cybersecurity kinds of things. Or, um, you know, I, I don't understand it. I've got these tools because I know I got to have a PC. I know I got to have cloud storage. Maybe, maybe I don't know that. Right. Um, so, you know, so what, what do I, I don't know. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, I that that's what we see a lot of and we also see the whole business process right uh, talk about that a little bit more what did what do you mean by business process so when you think about how you take in a, an easy thing is to talk about donations because they're very you know finite steps um you you take in a dollar and you Tr track it somewhere, somewhere, Excel spreadsheet, whatever it is, it comes in, you've received it, you've got to acknowledge it. Then what do you do with it? Uh, you, I'm sorry, you've got to receive it. Then what do you do with it? You've got to deposit somewhere. But what's your process to avoid fraud there? Is it two people? One person takes it in, signs it in, another person deposits it. And then if you have a system, someone's got to put it in the system. Right. And then it has to be able to be reported on. And then there's an acknowledgement. If it's a five thousand dollar donation, you want your CEO to have it written. So there's this these steps. Those are like six or seven steps that have to happen for every dollar that comes in as a physical check. Do you know that? You know that that's a simple one. Probably right. you do know that. Another one that might not be as simple is you've got a new employee and you're onboarding. Mm. What do you have to do? There's a whole lot of steps there. Do you right. have it outlined? We just had a team meeting today, and one of our um, one of our project managers was talking about two things just recently that happened, and she was talking about the timing of these projects, and one and they were both process assessments, so really right into this, and one was a situation where they only had one tech guy, and um, he they 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 nobody else knew how to do this whole standing up of the system and and doing the reporting. I think it was Salesforce or something. They had no idea. And they had this process uh, map driven for them. So it clearly articulated what you do when you put something in Salesforce, what you have to do when it, you know, you got to take it out and steps, the whole process. And he left. So thank goodness they had this, it just completed it so that they had to put a volunteer in and the things that they had to have happen could happen because they knew this yeah. is exactly what happens. Mm -hmm. Another situation, they had a different process going on. I don't even remember what it was about, but the gentleman had a heart um, cardiac incident. Oh no! And again, right after they'd done this process, and he's doing okay. He's on, on recovery, but he's going to be gone for who knows how long. And they yeah. don't have an nonprofits don't have a bench of five tech people <laughs> to step in, right? No, they have. They they're don't. lucky. They have one. Right. If, if they don't have one, they've got the marketing guy who knows technology because he's doing the website, right? So that's, that's the right. tech guy, right? So. You know, you lose our in nonprofit space. Our key man risk is so high yeah. that in the technology space, if you're not clear in any of the spaces, you know, you you don't have a ton. You don't have excess people in development. Right. If you lose one and they're the only one doing that process and you don't have it written down so you can say, OK, we can do this until we hire the next person. We can get through. You're stuck. So that's why process becomes so important. And honestly, David, that's what we do most of. Really? Um, I can't not the business how many, process. How many clients have come to us and they can't find their social media login passwords because mm -hmm. you know, the person set it up before. And, you know, that that's not an easy fix. I mean, Meta and all those other ones don't really like you know, giving out information. Right. And, oh, and it is so, not an easy fix. So is so, even, even for that, is there a process for storing passwords, right? For Yeah, there is. You know, yeah, there is. And so, so thinking through that, and, and what we find is the things that we do are things necessarily that sometimes the nonprofit has the skill set to be able to say, okay, I could do that process myself, right? Right. But they don't have the time to think about it. Right. 
you know, they're so busy delivering to people in need that yeah. they don't have the time to step back and say, yeah, that was really dodgy the way we did that. We probably did 10 <laughs> steps there. We could have done it in five, right? They're just, I got to get this food to them. I got to get this service to them. Right. So our work allows them to step back with a partner yeah. and find that space to think it through and, and tighten it up. Um, and so I, really I also cool. wanted to acknowledge here too, that when you're talking about your partners, uh, these are no slouches, right? I mean, these are some pretty impressive folks. When I first met you all and was learning about you and some of the names that were thrown out as partners, I was, uh, pleasantly surprised by some of those. Yeah. And I don't know if you can mention them specifically or if you, absolutely. but you know, go ahead tell people kind of what, what are some of the folks who have partnered with you to work with your nonprofits? Absolutely. So we work with Fortune 10 down to Fortune 622 organizations. Um, so the names that you might know in that, in the higher echelons of the, the Fortune 100 would be um, uh, Ally Financial, uh, Bank of America. Obviously, being yeah. headquartered in Charlotte, we have a lot yeah. of financial institutions involved, truest Um Consulting firms, a lot of consulting firms involved, Accenture, EY, yeah. Deloitte, PwC, um, wow. you know, all of those kinds of names that you just know, Lowe's, uh, Food Lion, um, trying to think of other names that- uh, No, yeah, that's uh, great. No, but that, I mean, yeah. A lot of them are tech companies too. Yeah. They know what they're doing, right? They-, uh, they, they Oh, yes, they do. Oh, yes, they and do. They're, uh, and they're not usually called on to, to help you know, the average nonprofit. So it's really an interesting model that you've set up, um, you know, to, to be able to make these connections and to make these, uh, uh, you know, relationships, to create these relationships that potentially can change the way nonprofit and a nonprofit operates and how effective they can be. So kudos to you all for having the, the vision of, uh, of developing that. Um, what are some basic steps that your average nonprofit can take? Just, you know, maybe they don't, they, they aren't on, you know, on your radar yet, or they don't have the ability even to manage that. What are just some basic things from a technology perspective that a nonprofit can take to maybe improve their capacity or to increase their impact or even just to operate more efficiently, right? Absolutely. Well, go to our website, okay. Aparo, A P P A R O dot org and those there's a nonprofit tab and it says how to get involved just reach out for a call i mean that's that's going to be a good place to start i think about think really that the highest uh, quickest wins are with tools that you already have in place mm -hmm. right so uh, i was talking with an ed the other day and, and we do a lot of events because we're in this technology space we, yeah. we do a lot of events related to bringing technologists together with tech leaders and so we're very good at events and she had just started doing an event for, she didn't really have a reason for a lot of events and was doing one. And she said, oh, it was so hard. You know, we did an Excel spreadsheets and it was just a nightmare. We've got to reach out to the people who RSVP'd and how do we know who RSVP'd? And you're just very manual. She said, what are you doing? What tool are you using? And it turns out we're using Constant Contact, which she has had for 10 years, but right. had no idea that this functionality was there. So that's why I say reach yeah. out because that kind of question we can tell you it's constant contact. You don't right. have to go buy some new fancy thing. It's already there. Yeah. And I think about Microsoft Office or the Google Suite. Yeah. Um, so many of the tools are already there. You don't have to download. There's even AI content for yeah. teams. Um, there's just so much there, including the security elements yeah. that so many times, you know, I think about nonprofits who uh, I've talked to who are like, oh, yeah, we have we have Office 365, but we all store our things on our computers. I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> what are you doing that for? You know, they just don't know how. Right. So, so that's and some of that, some, of, you know, if you're really feeling adventurous and have time, which none of our nonprofit partners do. But, you, you know, Microsoft has a slew of YouTube training. You know, if yeah. you want to know how do I how do I customize my SharePoint so that I can find files? I'll bet they've right. got a 30 minute oh, YouTube yeah. tutorial on that. Yeah. Yeah. Or we can help you. We'll talk to you about it. You know, it's, and we probably have a webinar somewhere that's free on our website that, that you could access as well. So, um, you know, there's just, there's a lot you can do 
uh, with the tools that you have already. You, you've just got to know how to look under the hood yeah. and, and see what's there um, that you're already using and you're yeah. just not using it enough. Well, we're, uh, if I under, if I recall correctly, I think we are actually doing one of your digital marketing uh, webinars coming up with one of your cohorts. So we're grateful for that opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. For we that. love your partnership. Yeah. We, we've been yeah. so thrilled. Angel Oak Creative has just brought, um, has just been a real great partner. You have that approach of partnership too. Well, thank it's relationship you. first. It's about lifting up the team and, and really helping to the end result. So we it's been fun for us to meet you as we expand into Raleigh and, and mm -hmm. Durham and sure. Cary and whatever else. So, Car the rest what, of the uh, world. Yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> RTP. Yeah, well, I'm excited about that. And thank you for uh, for that opportunity. Your team's been great as well. It's just been a, a, a great collaboration so far. So we're- I'm so glad. Yeah. Um, Yay. anything else you want to make sure that nonprofit leaders, uh, who are listening, um, uh, are aware of as it relates to nonprofit tech or Aparo or any of those things? You know, it's just, it's just the stayed words of, you know, technology can feel frightening when it's not the yeah. thing that you are there to do. Yeah. And we understand that. And we, we, we like to say we speak nonprofit and we speak corporate. So we think our secret sauce is being in the middle to yeah. make sure that sometimes when you go to a corporate partner for a solution, they give you the right answer. Um, it's the answer that they've done a million times, but they don't quite understand your capacity to sustain it. And so we want to be a partner in the room for you um, to be yeah. a voice yeah. at the table to help guide you. Um, so you don't have to do this alone. Uh, we do this. And and we we are a nonprofit, and we want to help you do whatever it is you do without having to spend so much time uh, worrying about your technology, worrying about uh, leaning into it. Because uh, there's a way to do it um, that that won't tax you and and, and make you fearful. <laughs> well, you all have really, you know, created something unique, and uh, and I, you know, I'm sure there's things out there similar, but you know, I, I've 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 been around a little while, and I haven't heard about too many of them. So I haven't either. Know, there are, are other something. pro bono partnerships, but they're they're not facilitated. So no, that's, and, that's the and I think that makes all the difference in the world. It you does. all are are making a great difference of connecting people and and helping to demystify technology and to uh, make it a little less scary, a little more approachable and, you know, a lot more effective. So to your point, some people don't even know what they don't have or what they do have. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. you know, I think uh, that's the, that's the key. So, well, Kim, remind people how uh, they can get in touch with you and Aparo. The best way is our website, Aparo, A-P-P, -P, two P's, A-R-O dot O-R-G. And actually in the uh, RTP region right now, we are in the midst of a Mission Possible Award. So oh, that's nice. a $10,000 grant and $50,000 of um, Accenture Consulting to a nonprofit who has an idea about innovating how they serve um, folks looking to get out of poverty. So look on our website for that. And I need to that out again yeah. to our clients. So yeah. Uh, well, that's great. And they can find that information on your website, too. They sure can. They okay. sure can. Well, great. Well, Kim, thank you so much. Uh, thank you and Aparo for the commitment you've made to, to our nonprofit community. So grateful to to have a, a relationship with you all. And uh, thank you all who listen to our podcast here, this nonprofit state of minds. Uh, you're obviously listening now, but uh, certainly encourage you to check out some of our previous episodes if you have not. And uh Look forward to you know having you back and uh, and listening uh, and hopefully being uh, part of your nonprofit journey. So thank you all, Kim. Thank you so much. Have a great day and look forward to to staying in touch with you as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much, David. Great conversation. I always love chatting with you. Well, thank you. Thank you.